Hello everyone. I would like to begin by extending my heartiest welcome to each one of you there. Your academic career has taken new turn. And congratulations everyone. This is the college life you are starting officially today with this lecture. Let me introduce myself. I am Monoji Chakraborty and I will be your English teacher here in this college. Well, to begin with, the past one and a half year hasn't been very good for us. We have seen lots of troubled times, distress and misery in our lives as well as in the lives of our near and dear ones. The COVID-19 pandemic, the lockdowns, this had created a deep misery in our life. As a result, uh, you could not appear for your HSLC examination for which the board had to resort to certain other ways, other modalities to evaluate your results. While your results stay awaited on 31st July this month, you have already started your new career, new academic career with this video in this prestigious institution, Presidency Junior College. I would like to invoke what Mr. Robert Downey Jr. one Iron Man said in the last last film and game part of a journey is the end you have completed one part the hslc the schooling is over here you begin a newer trajectory a newer line of learning a newer line of knowledge which will take you ahead in your career which will be based on the kind of focus the kind of grit the kind of determination you have and that will actually build up or mold your thinking and ultimately that's what success is to reach what you aspire for but the ground groundwork must start immediately from today so as has been the ritual let me proceed ahead for general english you are having two important books the names are hornbill and the other one is snapshot two important books are there you have to buy both of these you must be possessing both these books i will start today with the hornbill a particular poem from hornbill a photograph so photograph when i say utter this term a photograph the automatic thing that comes to your mind there is some imprints are there it will be a photograph some pictures will be there and this causes and this causes the invocation of certain fond memories. A photograph, this poem is written by Shirley Tolson. And let me tell you something, how to proceed ahead with the text. When you are proceeding ahead with the text, one important thing is to understand the title and have a certain idea before pro uh, progressing, before proceeding with the poem. This is very essential to have a greater understanding. Once you have a certain bit of an idea with the title or what the subject matter or a certain amount of idea of what the poem can be, of what the prose can be, you are more comfortable traversing through the various lines of the poem. This is what I mean to say. So when I say a photograph, the automatic vibes that come, the automatic emotions or expressions that come to mind, are of those fond memories a photograph what can be you look at a photograph of yours and see how you were there at that particular time when this photograph was taken this actually what photograph is the purpose of a photograph is to preserve memories some are sad some are good some are very beautiful the photographs with your friend during the hss or during your school days these are both sad and beautiful. They are sad maybe because most of you haven't been able to say goodbye. Most of you haven't been able to say farewell to your school life, to your school friends, to your teachers whom you adore and adulate so much. This is one part of the photograph. The other important part of that photograph is, maybe with your friends or your teachers, is you get to know and you get to feel how those times were. That brings smile to your friends. And that smile is worthy of everything. Let me begin, as usual, with this photograph uh, written by Shirley Tolson. 
The cardboard shows me how it was when the two girl cousins went paddling. So it begins like this. The cardboard shows me. Now let me tell you. The cardboard is basically a structure. It's basically a support on which a photograph is there. You have seen how older photographs were there. Now time has evolved. Your camera has a your phone has a camera that clicks photographs. This is not the thing. Earlier, at least 10 years, 15 years, or much earlier, the system was different. You had to go to a studio, click a picture, and then place it on the portrait, and then place it on the cardboard uh, that gave it support. This is how the system was. So the poet, Shirley Tolson, is also saying the same thing. Shirley Tolson has come across a photograph that shows two girl cousins paddling walking moving here and there paddling okay each one holding one of my mother's hands and she's a big girl some 12 years or so so uh, th th this thing is getting very interesting look what shirley telson is looking at the cardboard shows me how it was there was a cardboard on which i saw uh, the cardboard was showing two girl cousins had gone paddling Paddling, you can say for a picnic, they were walking here and there. This is what paddling means. Each one holding one of my mother's hands, and she's a big girl, some 12 years or so. All three stood still to smile through their hair. Now you get the basic picture. There's a photograph, there are three people standing. Two girl cousins and one big girl. Look what it's written here. Each one holding one of my mother's hands, and she's a big girl, some 12 years or so. The big girl is the mother. And all the three are holding each other's hands. The two girl, the two girl cousins are holding the hands of that big girl, the mother of the boy who is 12 years of age. So we get to know, we get the impression that the poet Shirley Tolson is looking at the photograph when she was not born. Is looking at the photograph of her mother when she was not there. The mother was 12 years of age. And the scenario, let me explain the scenario now. They had gone somewhere, kind of a beach, sea beach, because the world paddling is there. So they're walking, they're walking on through the surface, water, this is there. So they somewhere might have gone there, onto the beach. And the situation is, two girl cousins and the big girl, 12 years of age, the mother of the boy, Shirley Thompson, who was not yet born then. So both, all the three of these, all the three of these stood and someone clicked their picture. This is the picture we are talking about. The boy, Shirley Tolson is looking at a picture that has her mother in between and by the two sides, two girl cousins, two girls are there standing by the side of that big girl who is 12 years of age. That much we know up till now. All three stood still to smile through their hair at the uncle with the camera. All the three stood still and they're smiling. Why not? Because it's a childhood stage. Childhood, you see the camera automatically you start smiling because someone is getting you snapped. Someone is getting you clicked in the photograph and this remains etched in our memory forever. So exactly the, this is the thing that is happening. They're standing somewhere and they are smiling through their hair means the place where they are, it is windy, the wind is blowing, so the hair is moving and the smile is coming through the hair. This is a very beautiful description, a very beautiful, well thought line of how the natural scenario was. It's very poetic and very mesmerizing. Smiling through the hair to the camera because there is one uncle there standing who might have been, who might have been the guard of those three girls because all these three were little girls only 12 years 12 years is still a very young a very small child and 12 years was the age of the mother of the boy at that time when that photograph was clicked i had the uncle with the camera a sweet face my mother's that was before i was born a sweet face my mother's the poet feels happy the reminiscence of the past looks at the photograph my mother is smiling that is something very passionate, that is very deeply loving and absorbing moment. When the poet who has now grown up, as it appears to have, when the poet who has grown up is looking at a photograph of her mother when she was in a youth, when she was very young, she had gone to a beach, 
to click the photograph and the boy is happy my mothers that was before i was born and the sea which appears to have changed less washed their terribly transient fear let me explain you these are very important lines the last two lines are very important and show the ultimate reality of life try to understand this the three of them the two girl cousins and the mother of the pot the 12 year old big girl had gone for a sea beach paddling as you know had gone to a sea beach they were walking around holiday maybe there was an uncle who was clicking their pictures this was when they were very young now it says and the sea which appears to have changed less washed their terribly transient feet the word transient means not permanent temporary terribly transient means temporary which appears or which means that they went to that place they went to the sea beach got clicked enjoyed the sea holiday it's done it done and as they have come back their lives have taken a drastic change the lives have been to drastic change the mother or the two girls at that moment at the present may not be the same but the sea will remain the same washed their terribly transient feet means the place where they visited the water of the sea which washed their feet still remains the same it doesn't change much the nature doesn't change much is the human beings is the human beings who have undergone a change when the poet is looking at the photograph remember this photograph is the childhood is the picture of the childhood of these three young girls the moment when the poet is looking a lot of years have passed if you know because the picture was at a time when the poet was not yet born and now the poet as it appears to be has grown up into an adult by the way the poem has been written so these long years have passed and each of the lives in the photograph have been affected has been influenced drastically there has been a change but has the sea changed no the sea hasn't gone through a major or drastic change nature remains regains or retains its position it's the human lives which are not permanent the meaning of this line washed their terribly transient sea, uh, feet means that the sea where they had gone still almost remains the same but the people who had visited the sea at that time over the years have undergone huge changes in their lives and this is a very important message there's a very crucial point being illustrated here human beings the life of the human beings in contrast with the nature is very different nature is powerful nature is dominating the human beings must follow them the human beings must obey because we are not the permanent creatures on this earth we are not the permanent ones in contrast with the nature in contrast with the nature it must be known that we are second in number we are second in number nature is the first some 20 30 years later she would laugh at this snapshot see betty and dolly she would say look how they dressed us for the beach some 20 and 30 years the second stanza takes us to a time 20 30 years later so 20 30 years later she would laugh at this snapshot who was laughing the mother 20 30 years later the mother is laughing at the snapshot 20 30 years have passed that means if the mother was 12 years of age at the time when the photograph was taken at that time maybe she might be 30s or 40s 30s or 40s this is the age must have been of the mother so when the mother came to look at that photograph she smiled she would laugh at this snapshot because that was a time when we could hang around when we could move out with our friends at the age of 40 you do not expect to be living a carefree life at the age of 40 you do not expect to live a life shunning responsibilities no you cannot do that at that moment you are burdened by a family you are burdened by your responsibilities even now you people come you will be coming to college as soon as uh, the college reopens you will be coming to college you will be making new friends but at least 10 or 15 years later you none of you will be in a position to live a life exactly the way you are living now or you have been living at least 2 3 or 5 years later the life that you spent in your school
carefree, nothing to do. Go to school, study, come back home. The responsibility is shared by your parents. All you need to do is to work hard and get some good marks in your marks. That's all you have to do. 20 years from now, that will be completely overturned. The ruptures will be shaking you up. This is what happens. The best times do not continue. This is the, good of, the best of times, the worst of times, both mix up together. So, the, after 20 or 30 years, the mother came to look at that old photograph and she loved it, the snapshot. Snapshot means that photograph. She loved the, the snapshot. It was very, very innocent memories were coming. She looked at the photograph and very innocent memories came. Even all of you, look at your pictures when you were two months, three months, one year old, two year old. How you were dressed by your parents, how you were dressed by your mother. When you look at those pictures, you will laugh, obviously, but there will be an innocence. The pictures contain your innocent face, your innocent, in, your innocent life. If you look at those pictures, you feel jubilant. Yeah, I was like this. I was looking like that at the time. Typical clothes, maybe red, uh, yellowish. You were, but your your mother used to prepare you for going to school. So there are different kinds of pictures of you at different ages, and all these pictures say a particular. Peculiar story. And look how they dress us for the beach. So the mother is saying, the mother is saying to the daughter, look how they dress us for the beach. How we were prepared by the uncle, how we were prepared at home, how we were dressed up at home to be sent to beach. We went to beach, we clicked off pictures. Look how we are we dressed. The sea holiday was a past, mine is a laughter. Both try with the liberties of loss. Now this is something very touching. Try to understand. The sea holiday was her past. Mine is her laughter. Mine is her laughter means. For the mother, the sea holiday was an enjoyable moment. The sea holiday was a moment of relaxation. The sea holiday was a time when she enjoyed and felt happy, relaxed, joyous. Everything was there. The mother misses the sea holiday. The time when she could be carefree. The time when she could move around with her cousins. That was the time for the sea holiday. Mine is her laughter. This is a very sad line. The poet here is saying, mine here is the poet Shirley Tolson. For the poet, sadness is something else. Sadness is, she has not seen her mother smile. And it's very touching. The poet misses the happiness of her mother right after her birth because there has been troubles in their family. Shirley Tolson had certain troubles in their family. So after the birth of her, the Shirley Tolson was born and from the time her senses came, she just started realizing things. She hasn't seen her mother happy. She hasn't seen her mother smile. And this pains her heart and this completely shatters her. She's sad. Because the kind of expression her mother gave, the kind of light that came to the face of her mother, the moment she saw that photograph of hers when she was 12 years of age, she misses that smile, she misses that spark, that happiness in her life. She hasn't seen her mother happy. She hasn't seen her mother life. Maybe there were certain troubles, there were certain problems going on. So happiness was not there at least in her mother's life. And so the point. Both try with the labor is of loss. Rye means disappointed. The word rye means disappointed, very sad. Both try with the labor is of loss means that both of them are suffering. Both of them have lost something. What has the mother lost? The mother has lost the gleeful childhood days. The mother has lost those wonderful memories created at the sea beach with her two cousins. This is what the mother had lost. The mother cannot go back to the time. Even you, the photograph which you see of your five years of age with your parents sitting around you. Can you go back to that time? No, you cannot time travel. That is, that is completely impossible. You cannot time travel to that place. Similar is the case with the mother. The mother misses the holidays. For the mother, those moments, the moments spent at the beach with the cousins, are very beautiful moments, memorable ones. She cannot get it back. She cannot get it back. The only way, she, the only thing she can do is to think about it and miss them. Think about it. Think about those memories and regret and repent that, oh, these are not going to come again in my life forever now. Both right, the liberties of laws, the second part, 
the poet is also suffering the poet Shirley Tolson also is suffering also disappointed why because she hasn't seen like I said in the previous line she hasn't seen her mother happy she's seen her mother only sad filled with thoughts filled with trouble complex life she wants to see her family happy at any cost she wants to see her family happy and they cannot so both try with the liberties of loss the mother is sad because she cannot be a part of those joyful childhood years spent around the beach in the company of the uncle and the two girl cousins the poet is sad because she hasn't seen a mother smile she hasn't seen a mother happy for a long time and this pains her heart this is what the second stanza is moving to the third stanza which is quite very short now she has been dead nearly as many years as that girl lived and of this circumstance there is nothing to say at all. Now she has been dead. Who is dead? The mother. The mother is dead and the poet is at loss of words. The poet has nothing to say. The poet has nothing to say regarding these circumstances. And of this circumstance there is nothing to say at all. It's silence silences. The death of the mother has silenced the poet. The poet cannot feel anymore. There is a pain, there is an anguish, there is an anger in her because the life with her mother hasn't been that good always. There has been troubles and she could not at least share a very good relation or at least her life could, wasn't good in the company of her mother. One important thing you might notice here, these three phases, the first stanza, if I may refer to stanzas or phases, the first stanza, where do you find the, where do you find the point? The point is not there actually is the poet's mother, a 12-year-old girl, at the sea beach. Keep things very simple and very sequential. First stanza is the first phase. The mother is a 12 years of age in the photograph with the two girl cousins at the sea beach. The second stanza opens where we see that the poet is born and is of a certain age. She is almost an adult. The mother is in her 40s, 30s or 40s. So the poet, Shirley Tolson, is almost an adult adult or adolescent at least she has she was born and she has spent a lot of years the mother is looking at the photograph and she's laughing how remembering those joyful days the third stanza shows that the mother is dead and the poet is loss of words is everywhere it's silence the poet cannot take the pain suffered at the loss of the mother let me clear this one for you. Three different stanzas show us three different timelines. These three different timelines should not be confused. Now, do not get confused. Abhi aise confused mat ho na ki poet ne teen different time, time zones ya timelines mein likha hai. No. The poet hasn't written this poem in three different timelines. No. Written this only once. When the poet started writing this poem, the mother was already dead. Remember, the first thing to remember or notice about this point. When Shirley Tolson started writing this poem, the mother was already dead and Shirley Tolson had already grown into an adult woman. You got this. This is only the things can happen. The mother is dead already. Shirley Tolson was a matured adult young lady. What happens? She comes across by uh, accident or so, the photograph was there. She come back, comes across a photograph. She looks at that photograph and goes back in time when the mother was young, just as uh, expressed or just as shown in the photograph. Remember this, the mother is dead. The poet is grown into a, a, an adult woman, a young woman. The poet is already matured, Shirley Tolson. Then how does three different phases come to get reflected here the first stanza or first phase the pot goes way back in time when the mother was young and there she writes it second stanza she comes fast forward into the middle age where the poet was already born she had spent some, some sufficient amount of time sufficient amount of years in the company of her mother on this earth this is the second stanza. she comes back she comes a little ahead from that past the third stanza she comes back to the present moment. This is the situation. At the present moment, it silences, silences. What is this silence? The death of her mother. 
the death of her mother chokes the words of the poet Shirley Tolson. She cannot speak. She is filled with emotions. She has no one to share anymore. She has no one to share with these these kind of emotions. She is alone. And when one is alone, when one is filled with sad thoughts, no one to share with, feeling the death, feeling the loss because of the death of her mother, she is just sitting in silence. She cannot feel. The memories flood her mind, but they, they cannot move on. She is unable to move. Like what uh, Steve Rogers said, people do, we do not move on in Endgame. So this is, I'm not just connecting with that, I'm just giving a reference. So this is what we have come across in the poem, a photograph. Like you see yourself, if you pick up a photograph of your childhood when you were uh, two or three years of age, you are going back to that time. Maybe you do not remember anything, but at least your mother's or father's uh, grandmother's can actually make you aware of the situation. Then you come back a bit in time and think about how you were in class six or seven. Then again, come fast forward to this kind of situation where you are now. You are a college student, officially. So exactly this thing has happened. So if, my, if I may simply put this poem, the first stanza represents the first phase where the a poet's mother was very young, a 12-year-old girl who had gone to a sea beach to have a memorable experience with the cousins. The second stanza is where both the poet and the mother are suffering. The mother misses her childhood days of joyful experience, those joyful experiences, and the poet is suffering because she hasn't seen her mother happy. The third stanza is when everything is gone, the mother is dead, and the poet is there only to feel the pain and suffer in silence. That's all for this video today for this general English class. I have completed the poem, a photograph. I would urge you to go through the books, to buy the books, as I have told you, for general English, Hornbill and Snapshots. Get hold of this because we are starting a new journey. And I hope the first day you put your foot in, you must always be very cautious. You must always be determined because that's the only way to move fast forward. Put your foot in, march ahead, and let's see how the results await for us for the next two years. Thank you very much.